Hello guys, welcome to my channel and in today's lesson, I'm going to talk about Vim proxy server. So this lesson included two parts. The first part, I'm going to talk about the concept of a Vim proxy and why do we need it. And I'm going to talk about the few proxy mode, which is going to be transport, physical or things like that. And then I'm going to install a Vim proxy server in a virtual machine and I will teach you how you can do it in your production environment. So I have included a link in the description about Vim proxy sizing. I highly recommend you check out the link in the description and try to read it carefully. That will give you the great information about how you can use it in the production environment and commonly asked question from me as a Vim backup instructor, it is, uh, do we need to install it on the virtual machine or physical server? Of course, if you need to take better performance, I highly recommend you use a virtual machine inside your vSphere as a Vim proxy server. But if you use physical server, you need at least dual CPU, and for virtual machine, at least you would need eight virtual cpu in case of that you'll handle more than 50 or 100 vms so again i highly recommend you check out the link in the description and take a look at vm sizing link that you can know how you can do it in your production environment and you will get the idea about how you can sizing your vim proxy servers in your vim backup solution so before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on notification, like the video to get every new update almost every day. Back up all the infrastructure at the same time because of the load or interrupting may failure your backup job or overload your Vim backup server. We need to ensure the copy could complete without interrupting and all the other activities there are on the host. This is the Vim proxy functionality. Backup proxy is located between infrastructure component and backup server. It can be a virtual machine inside a virtual platform and can be a physical machine directly attached to a storage. This backup proxy gets the information from the backup server itself. When a backup server administrates the task, Vim proxy will process the job and prepare and deliver traffic to whichever repository is being configured for the job. Vim setup file will install the Vim proxy component when you initiate Vim installation. When you first install Vim backup and replication, the server itself has become a proxy server and anytime you create them or add additional one, you distribute the load from the backup server to Vim proxies. Vim proxy responsibility is to retrieve metadata VM, compress, deduplicate, and sometimes encrypt backup data prior to transfer. Be cautious about encryption because extra CPU resources that, that require. The last step is just transfer the data and exactly here is the biggest responsibility for Vim proxy. The major job here for backup proxies to optimize the efficiency of the data transfer whenever the job occurs. Design decisions are necessary to determine which transfer mechanism serve this purpose. Keep in mind that after installing Vim backup and replication, the best task is to define your backup proxy servers especially if you have a medium or enterprise infrastructure. And be cautious that you should never configure a backup proxy to backup itself up. This will reduce proxy server performance during backup VMs. So here, as you can see, I'm logging into my vSphere and here I'm having a Vim proxy server. So for your lab environment, you should install a virtual machine which is going to be Windows Server 2019 or 2016, like me, just a simple installation. And of course, in your production environment, if you have a heavy uh, data store, or I should say virtual machines or virtual environment, I highly recommend you. And of course, Vim company would recommend you to add 
8 virtual CPU and at least 16 gigabyte of RAM. So that's great. And we want to actually deploy Vim proxy component to this server. In your production environment, you have the storage that connected to your vSphere. So the best option that you can do is install virtual machine on your storage like other virtual machine. Imagine that I'm having uh, vSAN or something like legacy storage, something like EMC or NetApp. You will have all the virtual machine inside that storage. So I highly recommend you again put that virtual machine beside that virtual machine inside your main storage because this will give you the best performance of a Vim proxy server. The matter of using Vim proxy, having said that, in the first section is to accelerate the backups and to uh, distribute the load between your Vim proxy server and Vim backup server. So when you install a Vim backup server at the first time, you would install Vim backup server or we call it Vim Backup Manager, and of course your Vim Proxy Server. They're both installed in the same server. So we want to separate Vim Proxy from the existing backup server to another virtual machine. So that's the point that you can do in your production environment to handle the traffic between your Vim Proxy Server and your backup jobs. Otherwise, you will see that Vim Backup Servers cannot take the backup specifically for heavy virtualized environment. You will see the failures, you will see the low speed, you will see that some tasks cannot run perfectly. So now here we'll go to Vim Backup and Replication and here in Backup Infrastructure, here as you can see we have two options which is Vim Proxy and Vim Agent. Both of them are actually installed for my Vim Backup server as it is shown here the host name. As you can see, this is exactly the proxy. By default, when you install Vim Backup Server, you will install Vim Proxy also. So in today's lesson, we're gonna deploy another Vim Backup Proxy to the environment. So we'll right click and we have a few options. This is the new option, VMware CDP Proxy, which is going to accelerate the tasks specifically in your outside location or I should say DR site or disaster recovery site. So first option is going to be add backup proxy. Of course, we will use this option for physical server, which is not recommended. The second is going to be add VMware backup proxy. That means right here. You already added a virtual machine and you want to actually promote it to Vim Backup Proxy. And the second, sorry. And the last one is going to be at Hyper-V of host backup proxy. If you have a Hyper-V, you should use the last one, which I deeply talk about it in my Vim Backup course. So here we'll use at the second option and as you can see, it automatically detects the first or the main Vim proxy server, which is our Vim backup server. So here we're gonna say add, and we're gonna use Microsoft Windows. By the way, you can use a Linux operating system for your proxy server, which it was released in version 10 of Vim backup. So we're gonna say Microsoft Windows and We'll type the IP address or of course the host name of the Vim proxy server that you already installed at a virtual machine inside your storage and you want to promote it to the Vim proxy server. We're going to click on next and here we're going to select the credential. Of course, this is not going to be joined to my domain. I'm going to use its credential. So we're going to say OK. And next and now as you can see the wizard it will connect to the proxy server I mean the virtual machine and it will detect the previously installed components for that virtual machine so if we go back here in the proxy server in the vSphere let me show you here as you can see we don't have any Vim 
component installed. So we'll go back here. Um, here it says the credential is not matched. So So as you can see now, we are ready to install the transport component to the virtual machine. We're gonna click on apply and we're gonna see the process of deploying our uh, Veeam proxy server. So now as you can see, we successfully deployed our Veeam proxy server to the virtual machine. So we're gonna click on next and finish. And of course here we can select the new Veeam proxy server. So we're gonna select the new proxy server. These are the default option here. You can use the transport mode, which for our case, if you already installed your virtual machine beside other your virtual machine in your whatever storage that you have, you can select the direct storage access, which is going to be connected by HPA to your storage log. But if you don't have a good storage, or I should say it is uh, iSCSI storage or something like you use your local server disks, you should select this one. And if you have physical, you should select this one. So this is the difference. But in most cases, the Veeam proxy agent will detect which one that you are using. For example, if you are using your virtual machine inside your SAN storage disk is, of course, it will detect direct storage. Or if you use physical one, it will use the network option. So again, the best option is going to be direct storage access. That means your virtual machine inside that storage. And of course, the storage is going to be connected by HPA to the hostess, which is going to be your ESXi or Hyper-D. So we're going to accept the default option, but in your production environment, based on what proxy server that you are using, you should select this option. So we can select this option as we have the direct storage access. So, and this is going to be connected data store. Here you can see, for example, I want to connect my proxy to handle the virtual machine only in this data store. That's great option if you have a massive data store, something like more than 10 terabytes of your data store, it's recommended that you point your proxy server to handle the job inside your data store. Let's imagine that you have more than 10 data stores and which one of them more than, uh, again, 10 terabytes. You should install for each uh, storage a proxy server. That doesn't mean you only need one proxy server. If you have a massive virtualized environment, maybe you will need two, three, four. You will get used to it when you uh, install the first Veeam proxy server. And if you see the low performance of running the job or something like uh, the speed of the backup is not accurate or you need more speed as you have a higher speed storage while taking backup you can again run another Veeam proxy server so now you know how to actually assign one Veeam backup to a data store which by selecting which one that you want but in your medium size or something like less than 10 terabyte of the data you won't need to assign any manual selection here and the default which is automatic detection is great option for you so and this is the max concurrent task per job for that beam proxy if you have a very high speed uh, virtual machine i mean more than 12 vcpu or more than 64 uh, gig of rams you can say for example for and again here is said you should increase the virtual machine resources so we're going to accept the default and we'll say next now the first wizard as you saw it was deploying the beam proxy and now we should configure it so 
Here, if you want to use uh, this proxy server to access uh, the outside data, something like in your disaster site, let's say that you have four ES6 sites and you have another four ES6 sites to another site for redundancy. This is how you can actually configure the uh, access the outside data store. So here you can manage, for example, uh, let's say I'm going to use the internet and the traffic of that internet is going to be 10 megabyte and you can select all the time or during this time you would use this 10 megabyte. This is how we can configure the bandwidth to get better performance for bandwidth consuming. So, and here of course use multiple upload streaming per job. It is five, you don't need to do it. And here of course you can select the virtual network for that replicated site or i should say disaster site so that's great we're going to use the default option and by the way the encryption is uh, enabled by default so we're going to say next and apply and we're going to start configuring our virtual machine here as you can see this is the process so next and finish now we have Beam proxy server that already installed and ready to use it in our jobs or replications or Veeam copy or whatever tasks that you have in your Veeam production server. So before we continue this lesson, I highly recommend you check out my website here in the courses and of course Veeam availability course here you can see my free course for monitoring your virtual environment with the Veeam One software and here how you can take backup by Veeam backup and replication. This is great course. I talked about all these options here, proxy server and van accelerator. If you want to know more about how you can use Veeam proxy in your production environment, I highly recommend you enroll in this course, which is very high rated course. So. Now that we saw how to install Veeam proxy server, now is the time to apply it to the job or replication job. So we'll go back here to home. And here, for example, for this AD job or this VM's job, we're gonna click on edit. And here for virtual machine, as you can see, these are the virtual machine. Let me remove this virtual machine. And this is the storage. As you can see here in the proxy server, we're going to use this proxy server. That's great. This is how you can apply new uh, Veeam proxy server to the job. And we're going to click on next and of course finish. That's great. Now when you run the job, you will see that in your massive virtualized environment, you will see the improvement in your speed and the task is going to be run perfectly without any errors if you have a massive or I should say big virtualized environment. And again, for the replication job here, you're gonna select again virtual machines here and the data transfer here you can use the second Veeam proxy server, which is going to be source proxy here. And of course, for the target, you can use the target proxy server, which is located in your disaster site. So that's great. So again, I should mention that when you use a Veeam proxy in your environment, you will improve the performance the speed the accurate tasks you don't get the very common uh, errors while your Veeam backup server is under the pressure of taking backup from all your jobs if you have multiple jobs or of course multiple data stores or sun storage in your environment so i hope you like the video please don't forget to subscribe and like the video put the comment if you have any questions don't hesitate and I will answer the question very quickly.